Hello everyone, this is Abdurrahman Zayan and our first section of our topic today is about Internet of Things, IoT. The Internet of Things describes the network of physical objects that are embedded with sensor software and other technologies for the purpose of connecting and exchanging the data with other devices and systems over the Internet. These devices range from ordinary household objects to sophisticated industrial tools. Then why IoT is a huge revolution? Over the past few years, IoT has become one of the most important technology of the 21st century. Now that we can connect everyday objects via embedded devices, seamless communication is possible between people, process and things. Of course, not only that, by meaning the low cost of computer, the cloud, big data analysis, and mobile technologies, physical things can share and collect data with minimal human intervention in this world. Digital systems can record, mirror, and adjust each interaction between connected things. So well, how does it work? IoT devices send the data through internet, then data analyzed in IoT cloud, then the instruction will be sent to another IoT connected devices. History of IoT growth. We can see from the graph that in the last five years we had a huge development in IoT. 2020 we have over 50 billion IoT devices. So how about the future of IoT growth? Experts states that in 2022 we, ha we will have 75 billion devices and 100 billion devices in 2025. The goal of IoT is to connect many devices over a wide area at a fast speed while consuming low power. Which brings us to the more popular research area in IoT called the Low Power Wide Area Technologies, or LPWA, which can be classified into a non-cellular network where you need a dedicated wireless network to connect your IoT device to the receiver, or a cellular network where you only need a mobile internet network such as 4G and 5G to connect the devices. Non-cellular includes Sigfox and LoRaWAN, while cellular includes LTEM and NB-IoT, which is what we are focusing on. IoT has become more popular today because it's easy to deploy. You don't need to install new networks to connect your devices. You can just connect them to the existing mobile internet networks. The increasing coverage. Mobile internet is becoming more ubiquitous and are able to access hard-to-reach places. So NB IoT refers to narrowband IoT, which is a communication protocol for LPWA networks and uses existing mobile internet networks. It's called narrowband because the signal uh, is transmitted in a very narrow spectrum of 180 or 200 kilohertz, which means the signal takes less bandwidth to transmit. By using narrowband, we're able to connect to more devices, have better noise performance, while needing less power to transmit and have better signal coverage. NDIoT is created by Huawei and Ericsson, and they're designed for constrained devices which have limited processing power, connectivity, and battery life, suitable for IoT devices such as IoT weather stations in remote locations. It's also designed for low bandwidth and latency demand, where data is transmitted only once in a while, such as smart parking meters. It's also designed for stationary sensors, such as the IoT soil pH meters. Therefore, MD IoT is perfect for remote, stationary, low power, and low data rate use cases. So one of the main advantages of NB-IoT is its high connection density, which means it can support up to many, many, many devices per cell. It also has extreme coverage and it can cover 100 times larger area than 2G to 3G networks. NB-IoT devices also has a longer battery life and they can last up to 10 plus years in a single charge. It's also very cheap to deploy as the modules cost less than $5 and we do not need to build new networks to deploy. In today's presentation, I would like to talk about traditional metering. There is three main core topics to be covered. Definition of metering, how it's conducted, and problems faced in metering. So what's the definition? Metering, in general, is referred to measuring a quantity using a specific device. Conventional meters simply record overall usage and does not allow for monitoring 
a conventional meter requires a meter to read a meter reader to read it each month. They measure the amount of energy you're using and show them on the display in front of you. How it's conducted? Let's see. A mechanical electrical uh, meter cannot be read remotely or building. The electrical consumption is calculated by subtracting last month from this month. If you want to know how much electricity you are using, just simply subtract the first uh, reading of this of the month from the last reading and it will show you how many kilowatts you are using. Smart meters record how much gas and electricity you are using in real time and send information directly to your energy supplier using the same kind of signal and it works as mobile phone. So your energy supplier then use the data to make sure your bill are always accurate. Problems face it. A meter reader physically comes to the customer home or business to record the information and send them to the metering company. There is no data storage. If access cannot be gained to the meter, this may result in estimated bill. Electricity use is tracked by either waiting for customers monthly or quarterly bill. This application uses smart IoT meters to remotely monitor and record electricity consumption. IoT electricity metering comprises of three important things, which are smart meters, narrowband IoT network, and lastly, data management system. Together, these three pieces complete IoT electricity metering, and this solution is called advanced metering infrastructure. Now, let's see how does it work. First, the electric meter data is transmitted over a narrowband IoT radio interface to the data management system. The data management system provides management interface for billing, online prepay, customer relation, asset management, and etc. First, it provides wider coverage as it offers 20 dB extra coverage gain than 2G network, which enables it to be deployed in difficult locations such as tunnels, basement, and rural remote areas. Second, it provides a massive connection where over 50,000 IoT models can connect to a single network. Third, low cost and low energy usage. Since operating on narrowband IoT saves a lot of maintenance cost as module can operate over years with a single battery charge. Last but not least, it is easy to deploy as new users can be added to the network anytime as long as there is network coverage. Here are some countries that use IoT electricity metering. Portugal. Huawei, in collaboration with Jans and Ublox, developed the first narrowband IoT smart meter used in electricity smart metering for homes and generators in Lisbon. China. China Mobiles provide automated meter reading services consisting of narrowband IoT smart meter and cloud based device management. Sweden. Telia, a Swedish company, has built narrowband IoT networks to connect existing meters with both narrowband IoT and category M1 radios, which is now converting and managing over 2 million or 5.4 million electric meters across Sweden with cellular connectivity. off by the description there is no perfect smart water meter system that is used in real life the water uh, the water meter system calculates the amount of water that is being spent through the pipes moving on to the principle the principal point of this system is to decrease the usage of the water by the customer by forcing the power over their use of water by using this water meter system the water meter system is more efficient only with the usage of narrowband iot Band IoT is the trending technology development in the current industry with the huge service providers around the globe. Narrowband IoT makes the system much smarter and more efficient. Narrowband IoT can communicate through small bandwidth frequency with a huge and high data rates. On to the advantages. Uh, first of all, we have low maintenance cost. Number two, there will be less consumption and it, uh, and it will also reduce the leakage. And finally, we'll have a lower uh, bill price that the average bill is reduced by 15%. Start off by establishing the connection between the controller and the network. Then the sensors are going to read the value and displayed on the LCD. After that, uh, the data is going to be uploaded to the cloud and then it will be compared by the threshold. 
and if it's greater than the, than the threshold, it will send an SMS to the mobile phone. We, we can see the water uh, smart water system in one of the cities. We can see like the power consumption, the power factor, the pre pressure is decreased by 75 and there's a leakage detected. And you can see the smart uh, meters before the water enters to the building. Uh, water flow in South Korea before using the smart meters. We can see in the from table one uh, that there is like a high flow, flow, water flow rate. Like for example, Seoul 95.1, Busan 91.7, and we can see in the second table the flow, uh, the flow rate from 2015 up to 2016. Water management strategy in Korea is water management plus smart technology is equal to smart water management. So we have the smart device like real-time sensing, smart solutions like the flood control system, and we have the smart services like big data surface and data sharing. Finally, we can see after, after installing the smart meters that there is a huge leak detection that was carried out on vulnerable sections and reducing the flow meter errors. Uh, and we find out that there's a difference of 430 cubic uh, meters per day were found. Hello there. Do you really understand about MBIoT? There are many misleading concepts of MBIoT nowadays. Hence, there are some facts that we must know beforehand. First of all, many people think that MBIoT cannot allow any mobile interaction, but they are wrong. In most MBIoT devices, they are available for mobile interaction. For example, Telecom MBIoT network allows mobile users to across the national border in Germany, Australia, Hungary, and also Slovakia. There are some people thinking that MBIoT does not support any firmware updates, but in fact, MBIoT naturally offers a reliable downlink channel of firmware updates over the air. This allows, for example, important security updates just like our smartphone and also the device in sleep mode are updated immediately after waking. And most importantly, MBIoT is not just an interim solution until the 5G arrives. MBIoT offers completely new possibility for networking device and machine in the Internet of Things with 5G technology in the future. And then we are now ready for the coming big data era. The data from the device of MBIoT is ready for IoT applications such as big data analysis, which we only need to connect our device to the main server so we can do any analysis on the data. So next, how about let us talk about some risks of MBIoT. In reality, for every MBIoT device, there is a low possibility of security risk which come from their scale. There is a strong potential for orchestrating denial of service attacks by harnessing a cluster of devices to send unplanned communications towards designed victims. Hence, in economic aspect, there is also some economic risk which the service of MBIoT with a very low income per connection compared with a regular service plans are challenging their service provider. This will cause huge impact on the operating cost per connection. So, with all this information, we hope that you will get a better understanding on MBLT concept and application.